start. I'm going to get started. Good morning. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Welcome to Althea Center. It's a joy to see everyone here and those of you online, and I know those that are on its way. It's nice to see some old friends here and some new friends. We like to start at Althea to acknowledge the land, this beautiful holy land that Althea sits upon. We acknowledge that this is the land of the indigenous people of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Ute peoples, and their importance of us naming this holy land as we are the custodians of this land. This land is sacred and is made more holy for them and for Althea and for all of Denver and all of Colorado. Althea looks for opportunities to be impactful partners and allies for indigenous communities. Our building is a home for two nonprofits. These impact the communities in Denver. They are the Spear of the Sun and the Sisters of Color United in Education. Those work through activism, programming, and education is very impactful to the Denver community. And now our affirmation of diversity. We affirm that we are a community of diverse seekers and we are growing in diversity of race, gender, and sexual orientation, age, ethnicity, backgrounds, and physical abilities. We are evolving in the consciousness moving beyond differences and dichotomies to embrace oneness, unity, and community. We are ever more aware of the past and present biases, atrocities, and are committed to being an open and safe place for seekers to further their journey on a spiritual path to an awakening the spirits of oneness in all. And I like to add, Althea stands in oneness for everyone, every day, in every way. And now this is, there may be some sad foods because this is my fourth Sunday and I'm officially been here a month, yay. So, thank you. And I invite you all, because I, I forgot to say about returning to the cell phone after service, I invite you to silence your phone, put it on vibrate, or better yet, give yourself an hour or so off to be in silence and community. And now opening prayer from Kate Johnson. It's working. Everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. Well, I invite you to settle in. Settle into your chairs, letting go of your thoughts, your concerns, and just breathe deep into your solar plexus, your abdomen. Two deep breaths in to the sacred place within, in this sacred sanctuary. There in the center of your chest is your heart space, the fourth chakra holding space between human and spirit, a place within that we discover our own divinity, the knowing experience of being divine. The heart chakra, our love, bridges three chakras above and three chakras below. As above, so below. The heart is engaged from the very beginning of our lives to the very end. 
We are always striving to feel love. Something happens inside of us when we are conscious of love and bridge the human divine experience. It's the heart that makes the two one, awakens them to each other, no longer separate, instead one seamless experience. So let's say to ourselves, how can I connect with the energy of love in this situation at this time? with these people, keeping it at the forefront of our being without deciding what form love is going to take. After all, love makes the wheels go around. Blessings are always around us. Our loved ones, keep them close to us, community, nature. Let's bless the spiritual community with love, without conditions. And as we take one more deep breath in, we know that all is well all is sacred. Our lives are sacred. This place is sacred. And we give thanks to God, Spirit, Mother Mary, Jesus, and Buddha. Amen. Thank you, Kate. And now I'd like to ask any first timers, if you're not shy, to raise your hand and we'd like to welcome you. And the usher will be up to bring you a flower. Thank you for being here. And all newcomers, we have a community lunch afterwards. So please join us. It is free to all newcomers. Thank you. Please join me in um, saying, standing and saying the uh, statement of being. This is on your bulletin. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. We are individualized expressions of God and are ever one with his perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Please stay standing while we sing the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you That is my honor to present our musician. We are pleased to welcome our featured musician, Karen Karsh. Karen has sung professionally since the age of 15. As an adult, she has become a thinking person singer-songwriter. I write from the soul, explains Karen. She has performed with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra 
and recorder for the ABC Dunhill Records. In 1992, she was awarded Gannett Broadcasting's Innovation of the Year for her television feature, Unsung Heroes. Her songs have a positive message, and she says she likes her audience to leave her performances feeling like we all have a place in the world, and that if we let love lead the way, we'll make it a better place to live. Thank you. Please welcome Karen Karsh. Good morning, everybody. Wow, I'm pretty loud up here. Sounds like what I do, huh? This is the place we all get together because we know right where we belong. Yeah. We're here for loving and caring, healing and sharing, helping each other grow and be strong. You know it's all about spirit. I can't wait for you to hear it. No matter where you are, this is our place. Yours and my place, no matter near or far, this is my place, come on in, our place, so glad you're here, our place, everybody's welcome, we see God on every Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We all have access to communing with nature in this way, but we've forgotten how. Everyone can wake up, take their shoes off, and put their feet on Mother Earth and feel their deep-rooted connectedness to her. Many of my indigenous brothers and sisters were brought up this way, but most of the rest of us have to relearn it. Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. Every time you confront a specific challenge or problem in life by contemplating what it is that the universe is asking from you in response, whether it is cultivating the quality of forgiveness, for example, or wisdom, truth, or courage, it is as if you have declared your wish to be of service to the universe by actuating one of its divine qualities in your being. This establishes a connection between the two levels or poles of being, the divine and the personal. Pir, Veliat, Inyat, Khan, Sufi Master. And now to introduce our wonderful, wonderful spiritual director. Reverend Christina Jones 
is Althea Center's spiritual director and a religious science CSL minister, certified personal development coach, inspirational speaker, dietitian, and author. Prior to her becoming Althea's spiritual director, she has been active in the New Thought, New Age movement since childhood. Seven generations of powerful ancestors in her lineage have passed on metaphysical and spiritual principles from her family traditions from Africa and other cultures. Christina has supported various nonprofit foundations, domestic violence shelters, and homeless shelters nationwide. She also supports numerous law enforcement officers in Colorado in crisis intervention training. Christina celebrates life with her husband, dances, and thrives in the magical mountains of Denver, Colorado. Reverend Christina is the founder and creator of DivineFeminineEvolution.org, a new CSL-affiliated focus ministry celebrating the divine feminine in all. Christina is a healing emissary of light for herself and the world. Please give us a round of applause for Reverend Christina Jones. Thank you. And thank you, Karen, for being here. You're um, a gift to us, and your music is a gift to New Thought. Thank you. Well, it's September. Where did the year go? We're in the ninth month. And the Gregorian calendar, and the number nine means endings. And our calendars change since before Christ and even afterwards. So maybe August 31st and September 1st is the beginning of the new year. Maybe October 1st is the beginning of the new year. Who knows? For September, origins dropped in, going back to the beginning. I can't go all the way back because there was no internet back then. Some historians feel Hinduism is the oldest religion on the planet from 5 BC. I like to think it might be even from another galaxy. Ernest Holmes was one of the founders of New Thought along with Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of the founders of Divine Science, the mother of religious science, one of the founders of Divine Science, which helped create this building. They both said that they were, if there was a past life, Emma said it, Ernest Holmes didn't truly believe in it, however, they would be Hindu. Hinduism practices oneness, that God is in everything and we are God. That's what these teachings are. So without this being a workshop, because that's going down a rabbit hole, uh, we here are developing a workshop of going back to origins, first starting with prayer. However, I thought this was really good because as I was meditating on origins, I kept hearing James Earl Jones' voice saying, in the beginning. <laughs> I couldn't find a way to get it in the slide, but anyway. However, after that is Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God said, and he called the light day in the night darkness. The real word here is said. I've heard this as a little girl. God spoke the worlds into existence. Spoke, said. What are we affirming? So September in the olden cultures of farming, harvest time. The end of September, September 29th, we're gonna have a harvest moon on planet Earth. And we're in this go-between, especially in Colorado. For those of you online, pay attention to the weather. Notice if you have hummingbirds like we have in Colorado, they're starting to gear up to head on down south. I know for me and my husband living in the mountains, the morning feels like fall and night. And then all of a sudden, Arizona's been showing up in the middle of the day. That's really hot. So we're in this flux. 
Now, you know, as long as we've been alive, there's been a September, and there's always been a flux. But for some reason, it feels a little stronger because there's a flux in the political structure. There's a flux on the planet. More hurricanes, more earthquakes, more. Or maybe we just are aware of it because of technology. Therefore, these teachings are steep in affirmative prayer. So in lieu of going into your hair on fire watching the news, which can, you can easily do, how about we go into affirming what we do not see, but what we desire, peace, love, and healing. Speaking more words of prosperity, abundance, and love, and divine possibility. That's what these teachings are all about. Now, today is September 3rd, and oddly enough, when I was doing some research yesterday, was Emma Curtis Hopkins' birthday, September 2nd, 1849. Labor Day is always the first month, Monday in September, which was created in 1884, same time as New Thought. The Transcendental Movement was moving. So none of this is a coincidence. I personally love September because it's my birthday month, my mom's, my great godmother. All the women in my family were born, for the most part, in September that brought me to these teachings. So it's a fun month. However, I can never go to Mexico because I never know there might be a hurricane. Oh, well. <laughs> come see, come sa. So in my research, I love the emerald tal tablets. Turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Found, find thou the light soul within. Find thou the light soul within. Know that thou art the master. All else is brought from within. Even those online, if you're able, I invite you to breathe that in. Everything is from within. If we do not go within, we will go without. If we do not affirm happiness and wholeness and to avoid going to naysaying and anger, a lot of people are angry because some of them feel lost. Although I really don't believe any of us are lost. I feel sometimes there's just a misguidedness where the human gets in the way and wants to go into fear instead of the light within. I believe in the Hermetic texts, the Kabbalion, Egyptology, because these teachings took it all in and brought it to oneness. They made it a little simpler. I don't know if many of you remember when The Secret came out and it was all over, the law of attraction. Well, it's no secret. I was so grateful that Michael Beckwith and Oprah Winfrey and Esther Hicks all brought that out to the mainstream because some of my friends who thought I was crazy 15, 20 years ago, I could actually at least talk to them a little bit about these teachings. Even going to the the basics of manifesting is what, parking places and palaces? Well, how about putting another word in there called peace? The peace starts from within. Some days I laugh when I see protesters protesting for peace and they're screaming and yelling. I'm not seeing peace. When Mother Teresa said, when you stand for peace, she will hold in circles, but she will not march in rage. Because what we give out, we will get back. If you choose not to be peaceful, your body won't be peaceful. I've been wondering lately, there's a lot of people within my network that have been experiencing health challenges. And some of them I've known for 15, 20 years. Some of them have not been peaceful. And some of them, yes, they know of these teachings. 
but you're not really practicing it. They're running and running and running and running and running in lieu of you got 10 minutes to meditate or kick off your shoes and go sit in the park and feel the grass, especially before the snow comes, and get yourself grounded. Be rooted in the oneness. That's what we stand for. And it's not we as us against them, but there's a lot of them that are part of us. Those that want to tell us how to pray, what religion, how to be, how to dress, who to date, who not to date. Maybe we hold that center of peace for us, and maybe there may be a glimmer of that does affect and affect that individual who chooses not to be at peace. We are the light within. We emanate. Look at an MRI, look at an x-ray, look at the lightning we get. Look at the lightning anyone gets online because if our heart is radiating, that is spirit. So what are we harvesting? Are we harvesting peace? Are we harvesting oneness? If we go with us against them, it makes me wonder if the body energetically splits itself. Think about it. Because your heart's love. Your mind and soul is love. So when your souls go, or your cells go awry, I think your soul does something. And then you have dis-ease because you have discomfort in your body. I feel it's time for us to rest within and think about what we've harvested after COVID. When I think about the women that founded this organization, they couldn't vote. And they stood on principle. One of the other divine science churches is in Pueblo, where Kramer did miraculous healings of cancer. If she could, how about us? Many of us, yes, we believe, and I believe, Pray for the world. But one morning I woke up thinking, how can I be more at peace with myself? Where am I unease? So it takes 30 days to change a habit. I like to give spiritual homework the first of the month. And the kids are back in school. So I invite you to try this. Find a habit you want to release. And then pick up a new habit you want to create. See, you want to back off coffee. I know it's a big one, so no one comes after me and send me nasty texts. But maybe you think about, eh, maybe I should back off coffee. Maybe instead of three cups, one cup. And maybe the other new habit, that you drink more tea or just more purified water. That's something simple. Maybe you want more gratitude in your life. Well, while you're in bed, as soon as your eyes open, say, thank you. Every day is a gift. Say thank you. Try that every day. Even chant the word thank you seven times. I tried that for a week, and sometimes I still do it. The universe will give me more things to be grateful for. The universe always obliges. And Emma, as it was her birthday, the teacher of teachers, the world persists in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. And exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming what the world is. Last month, we spoke about affirming. When she wrote that, late 1800s, that's amazing. And America was not in the best place. It was in huge flux. Flus, viruses, everything was running amok. They did not have technology. They did not have the medical technology we have today. 
She and along with many other New Thought teachers and leaders, some we may never know of, were holding the high watch. Hindus were holding the high watch. Buddhists were holding the high watch in the late 1800s. We're in 2023. It's time for us to unfold into that divine possibility of truth, love, light, and wisdom. I saw something on the news that our country is divided. Very sad. Hearing about other states wanting to succeed from the union, and here we do not get political. However, we can still hold the high watch and not make them wrong. I mean, remember, if you look at a map of the Southwest, an old map, this was all Mexico. There are no lines when you look at planet Earth from space. You realize that? We are all one. So some of our brothers and sisters that we may or may not agree with that do not want oneness, how about you chant the word oneness? When we're seeing separatists go opposite, go into a light, go into a candle flame, and step into that healing. What, again, what are we harvesting from what we learned with COVID, what we learned with all the marches, what we learned in Vietnam and Korea? My dad was in both wars. What have we learned from World War I and World War II? Yes, we weren't there, but the history books are there. We made it through that. We are still unfolding as a country to see the youth that care about our planet is beautiful. They're standing on our shoulders as we are standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. What are we going to harvest from September to December? I feel some days intuitions about what's going on on the planet. And some days it's sad, and I do have to call in prayer support and call in a prayer practitioner, because I see things. But then I also know, well, I'm, I have to pray more. I have to take better care of myself. Some things I may not attend because I'm required to be home and be with myself, or take a long bath, or just let incense burn and wash over me, or whatever music you want to hear. Listening to a gong bath being in community, do everything and anything that will help your frequency rise. We are in a new evolution. It's not a revolution, it's an evolution. We are evolving. Here's the beautiful thing, we get to see it. I know some days you wonder, like you actually took the ticket and came on down, yes you did. And we all get to do this together in joy, in peace, in wisdom, in clarity. And to hold on to that, when I think of my great-grandmother who only knew French, who left this planet September 8th, the same day she was born, two years before I was born, and used to work with the Catholic Church because she, and they felt she was connected to Our Lady of Guadalupe. She believed in oneness. My mom gave those writings that she would just speak and told my mom in her 20s, interesting things are coming. Hold on to faith. Hold on to heart. Hold on to love. Love is what's created us. Love is what's created this earth. And we are not alone. So going back to affirming to the origins, affirmative prayer is claiming. There's several steps to it, but just for today, you could just chant, God is, therefore I am. If God doesn't sit right with you due to past religious beliefs or traumas, I'm a former Catholic, whatever works, universal, 
force, divine creator, light, love. I am light. Light is all there is. Chant that, especially when you have times of stress, knowing that we are not alone. We can't be alone. Because who's really breathing you right now? There's no way you can account for everything going on with our body right here and right now. Be still with peace and affirm the peace you want and desire for the world by affirming it within. And with that, I'm going to take us through a short little prayer. of being in oneness. And if you're willing at home and able and capable, gently close your eyes. (sighs) There's a peace. There's a love known by no name and all names. The Alpha and the Omega, the light within of truth and love. For there's a rainbow of wholeness that despite all the worldly events, there's always positive energy and love. There's always a hummingbird flying somewhere on the globe, a butterfly being birthed out of crystallis. I know for all of us in Althea and everyone in this room and everyone online that we're harvesting a new light, a new love, a new truth and wisdom a divine faith, a divine prayer of healing for ourself and the world. (sighs) Invite that breath of light in as we're going back to the roots and the origins of oneness. For we are light and the light is us. And we're infused in this glorious of light. And I'm grateful for everyone's presence grateful for Mother Earth, grateful for the divine spirit that created all sentient beings. And so it is. If you feel afraid And that fear is standing in your way Wherever we are That's where God is Mm. When we feel beauty all around you like the sunlight warm upon your skin oh feel that beauty deep inside that's the perfect place to begin
Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. I appreciate you. Thank you. Now I invite the ushers to come on up with the baskets. And we have many ways to give at Althea, which helps support this building has old bones, sacred bones, <laughs> but it's over 100 years old, so it helps support the building and everything Althea contributes to a community. There are ways to give, which is online at our website, or the QR code that you were given on the back of the program, you can scan. And we don't also have the dip jar in the back, I call it the Vegas jar, where <laughs> it's $10 dips and it just lights up a little Vegas fun. And your gifts, I know, for everyone, that is returned back 100-fold because we live in and with the law of circulation. And now as we do our offering affirmation, the universe provides all that I need and all that I give. With great joy, I share my prosperity, planting seed for a world I'm helping to manifest. And so it is. Thank you. And now we're at that time of the prayers of the people. Anyone that wish to share or be gifted an affirmative prayer, our volunteers will bring a microphone. They may hold it, to you, hold it for you, but I also ask that you keep it simple and keep it sacred, therefore, I request no last names. We are on YouTube and Facebook. And keep it personal to heart. If you are requesting prayer for someone else, please be sure that you ask that loved one that it's okay that we hold that for them because this, this is vulnerable for people. And as I said, I'm repeating, this is on social media. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just request a prayer for my brother, Tom. Uh, for guidance in terms of his health. Um, and I would like to request a prayer for, prayer for my sister, Gloria, once again for guidance, for financial guidance and direction, and just spiritual direction. And then just a prayer for my family for just health and healing and uh, continued healing. So, thank you. I a prayer for me for um, really healing and letting love in. Uh, 
Hi, I'd like to have a prayer for my friend Jane, who lost her youngest daughter to a car accident Thursday evening. She was just 25, and uh, I'm trying really hard to hold her in love and light, and I need as much help as I can get. If anyone requests a more deeper dive, Rick Kitzman, our wonderful practitioner, right there with his hand up, he is taking notes. So that prayer, your prayer request will go out to an email to our prayer partners within our community. There is on our website, you may email your prayer requests. And Rick Kitzman is here today to meet with anyone afterwards that's here in person for a deeper practitioner session. He's an amazing practitioner of affirmative prayer. And he knows the truth for all of us sometimes when we don't know it for ourselves. And now we have the announcements. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Reverend Christina. I am Ginny, and I sit on the board, and I'm part of the team that used to help more with Sundays, but now we have Christina, so we don't need as much help with Sundays, which is awesome. And we do have lots going on in this space, and you're going to see even more. Christina has some great ideas for classes. Part of what we announce are things that happen during the week, and as we get closer to the new year, you're really going to see classes increase. But for now, what I want to talk to you about, the classes that we do have every Thursday, and this is a Zoom one, so you can join us virtually, at 11 a.m. to 12.30 is Community Connections. Kathy Humphreys, wave your hand in the back if you want to know a little bit more about that. It's basically a discussion group that's been going on now for years, pre-pandemic, through the pandemic, and it's your way to connect with us during the week virtually. We also have a new book club, the Althea Center Book Club, every Thursday as well, but this one is in person. Arika, if you want to raise your hand. Uh, 2 p.m. to 3.30 in Darwin's Den, which is that direction. Arika King, the Reverend Arika King, will lead the uh, group through The Way of Mastery, a channeled work. If you would like to know more about it on your program, there's information there. Was there anything else, Arika, you wanted me to add? <laughs> okay, so talk to Arika if you want to know more and don't feel like you had to have been there for the two previous discussions. It's okay to jump in is what I'm hearing. And she'll tell you more about it if you want to know details. And she talked about being flexible, which segues right into yoga <laughs> because... <laughs> After a, a brief hiatus over the summer, Integrative Yoga with Linda is back. This is very popular, happens right here. It's an ongoing series, but I'm sure you could join that one as well. These are going to be August 31st through September 28th, 5.30 to 6.45. And you know what I'm missing here is the day of the week, Rick Stanton. What day of the week? Thursday, another, uh, Thursdays as well, Integrative Yoga? Yes. All right. So that's also, so Thursday is apparently a very special day. Mm -hmm. uh, but please join in. Again, everything you hear me talk about is always going to be on the website. So go to AltheaCenter.org and you can learn about it. It's often posted in the dining room. In fact, please join us. As was mentioned before, if it's your first time here, lunch is on us. If you can't stay today as your first time, come on back. It will always be that first time on us. But please join us. And there's plenty of time if you want to be part of Prayer Partners, which happens right after. Rick, go ahead and raise your arm again. Rick Kitzman will lead you through affirmative prayer just on the other side of this door, a one-on-one -on -one session. But you can also join us. There won't be a deep dive today. Many Sundays, uh, the speaker will go into a deeper discussion uh, in a smaller facilitated group. That's not happening because of the holiday weekend. So go enjoy your holiday after you have lunch with us and that will be back. Let me see if there's anything else. I be Oh, well, of course. We are going to hit that goal by the end of the year of raising $100,000. We are over two thirds of the way there, folks. So we just gotta get that last little bit. That's right. 
wow is right. It's why you see beautiful new carpet. It's why when you look up, you see beautiful new paint all around and more to come. So please help us get that last just under 30K, just under 30K. And then let me see if there was anything, anything else. I think that's it, unless Rick Stanton, do you have anything else? We are good to go there. All right, so I will, as we wrap up the rest of it, turn it back over to Reverend Christina. Thank you. Sing. Are we gonna sing? Let's That's the best the thing on the song planet. and wrapping it up. In the a song. Too. All right, my dear Daryl. friends. So here's the deal. When I'm here, even when I'm not, there's nothing better than singing. I love the sound of all of you together. And what we're going to re do, remember today is that I am so blessed. How about if I sing it for you just once through? I'm sure you know it. And then rock my world, would you? I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. Ah, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Here we go, everybody. Let me hear you. I am so I am I am so Okay, now here's what I'd like you to do. Think of somebody that you would like to say that they are so blessed, and we're going to sing You Are. You ready? Hang on one second. I've got to catch up with myself. Here we go. You are so blessed. Perfect. You, you are, are so blessed. I love you. You are so grateful for all that you have. You are so blessed. You are so blessed, you are so grateful, you are so blessed. And now we're going to look at everybody or just feel the whole room alive and well, and we're going to sing We Are. You ready? Here we go. We are so blessed, we are so blessed, we are so grateful for all that we we are, so we, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful. We are so blessed. Oh, give yourselves a hand. Yay. All right. I am not Bob. But <laughs> I get to do the closing prayer. Oddly enough, my prayer is all about being grateful. Wow. <laughs> so, first of all, God, we are so grateful for our community. This place is, is such a gift to all of us when we appreciate it very much. Also, Sundays, Sundays always feel like a celebration. They're a celebration of everything good, but also they're a reminder that the challenges we face, we sometimes, we can go through them, we can meet them by just allowing miracles to come in. But we have to allow them. And how exciting that our community is growing. You know, I always come and I sit near the front because I'm deaf. And uh, I turn around and like 10 minutes later, it's like there's all these people and it's so exciting. And lastly, we are so, so fortunate to have had our prayers answered and to have 
Christina as our spiritual director because she is fabulous. So for all that, we say thank you, amen, and so it is.